today's show, uh, we've, uh, I mean, we usually have two guests wherein we speak to uh, a fun house about their thoughts on a particular topic or an NFO that they are coming on with or a fund that they have and then getting an advisor to talk about it. Today, we're doing a small exception. Uh, there are a bunch of NFOs on and uh, slated to hit the street very, very shortly. And we're speaking, of the first part of our conversation is with Motila Loswal AMC to try and figure out what is so special about their asset allocation passive fund of fund. And then, of course, in the latter half of the conversation, we get to Radhika Gupta from Edelweiss to talk about the Edelweiss Nifty PSU Bond Plus SDL Index Fund 2026. Uh, Kickstart the proceedings with Pratik Oswal. He heads this whole passive business at Motila Loswal AMC. Pratik, so good having you. Thanks so much for joining in. Um, can I at the outset ask you, when you launch so many passive NFOs, do people on the active side tell you, KR, Bas karo bhi, you know, you will you will eat into our business. <laughs> yeah. No, so uh, so so far not yet. Uh, but essentially there's not a lot of innovation that happened on the active side. And the passive side, there's a lot more to go. So we have a jam pack 2021 happening. So uh, hopefully by now people are used to it. <laughs> no, 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 all of this is welcome. But the, the beauty is that uh, some of these uh, passive NFOs bring about such amazing products. Now um, when I was looking at your sheet and I was talking to a few advisors, uh, there was uh, actually before I get into that, can you just tell us a bit about this NFO? Or what is the concept of this and why is it that this will be, if it is, different from the others? All right. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Niraj. Uh, so, you know, um, I'll start with the story. You know, so uh, as you said, we've done a whole bunch of NFOs in the last year and a half. This is my ninth or tenth one. And, uh, and and I, I think it's purely because there was really not that many options for investors to invest in passive funds. And uh, out of the eight funds that we've done, seven of them are completely brand new. Uh, but but essentially, I think, you know, so the biggest question that I get from investors is that, you know, what fund should I buy? And uh, now it's a simple solution. We've created actually a solution on top of the passive funds that we launched over the year and a half. And uh, these are essentially portfolios that investors can invest in where you know, they get access to you know, four different asset classes, they get, uh, which are completely uncorrelated. So you get the benefits of diversification. All four asset classes are passively managed. You don't have to worry about someone about manager risk. And also you get uh, a lot of low costs associated with it. And you're also getting different risk options. You know? So today, you know, at a portfolio level, different allocations. You know, some of them are very aggressive. Some of them are very conservative. So I think it's very important for investors today to invest as per the risk profile. So we actually don't have one, but we have two funds that we've launched. You know, we have the aggressive option, which is a higher equity uh, component, uh, I think around 70, 75%. And we have the conservative option, which is about, I would say, 40 to 50% equity. Uh, so essentially, and we also have a secret, uh, uh, I would say, moderate option where you can just combine those two sort of, you know, 50-50 and you can get a simple 60-40 portfolio. So essentially, we are actually giving investors asset allocation and uh, these are not dynamically managed, you know. So in a in a traditional multi-asset fund, hybrid fund, the fund manager can decide whether to be aggressive or whether to be conservative depending on the market scenario. Whereas in this fund, the allocations are completely static over the lifetime of the fund. So whether you buy this fund today versus 50 years from now, the allocation will not change. So essentially what we're trying to do is you know, give the investor a simple portfolio that could really, I mean, in essence, replace or, you know, be as good as what they're managing. And we also offer rebalancing as well. So that's essentially two products that we've launched. Okay. Um, so uh, I, I reckon that uh, and in our previous conversations, uh, you've referred to one, the passive way of investing as being um, an effective long-term solution for cost, that notwithstanding, uh, I think you referred a number of times to asset allocation in all our previous conversations. So is this unique in any fashion that uh, it allocates money to various kind of asset classes? And I also heard you mention that for an equity investor, I think the equity component probably did you say 75%. So can you tell yeah. us, a bit, uh, can you tell sure. us about that so people who are watching kind of understand this? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I think, and, and I think we spoke about it last time as well about the power of asset allocation. In fact, you know, we had a, uh, um, I would say, um, a similar conversation, I would say, last year, where I argued that one fund is enough in a portfolio. We had a sort of back and forth out there. So I do believe that, you know, these two funds are actually, and I would love to have uh, to have someone sort of, you know, counteract me on this on, on this case. But, you know, essentially, uh, just to give a primer of these funds, 
both these funds, the conservative and aggressive, have four different asset classes. So an investor can get access to domestic equity, they get access to debt, they can get access to international equity through the S&P 500, and they get access to gold. And what we've seen is that, you know, almost never in history have all four asset classes gone bad together. You know, so essentially, if one or two asset classes go badly, you have the other two to sort of counteract that downside. So your portfolio has, uh, becomes a lot more stable if you look at it from a very long-term perspective. So, you know, if you look at the returns of these two funds, I mean, the returns are decent, but what is really impressive is that the returns are very consistent. You know, today, if you look at Nifty, if you held it from a three-year perspective, you know, maybe the returns are not good. 10-year percent, maybe not good, but if you see it from a 19-year perspective, Nifty returns have been absolutely phenomenal. And same with gold, you know, gold has been good for the last three years, 10 years haven't, and S&P 500 as well. Last 10 years have been great, last 20 years have been Okay, so essentially you're getting a portfolio which is very consistent in returns, the returns are decent and also you're also getting a uh, loss in volatility. So your standard deviation or your portfolio becomes a uh, lot less volatile by say 20 to 40 percent depending on which fund you buy. So I think that is the main base case for these two funds uh, you know, and, and, and I think the power of asset allocation comes in the allocation not on the fund selection. You know, today there's a study which says that you know 90 percent of your you know overall returns in the next in the over the very long time period does not really depend on market timing uh, what you buy and when you buy it it really depends on how you allocate your asset classes so today if in my equity section i replace a nifty 500 fund which we have today with any other fund that really does not really make a difference to your long term return so i think how you choose to invest in these asset classes is really what determines a lot so this so this these funds are basically catered to the 90% which is where I think um, you know what determines long term returns. And and, and Pratik, are you in an eff- in, in in effect making an uh, making an effort to uh, so to ensure that uh, the the investor and the lay investor who's putting in money into mutual funds uh, doesn't get too disillusioned too quickly in the case of uh, you know flat periods or moderately down periods because I think we've seen that behavior in 2020, right? I, a lot of people lost money over a one year, two year, three year period in funds and as soon as those uh, monies came back to break even, people took the monies out of mutual funds. So in, in this, by this, is there some analysis that you've done wherein it can counteract that kind of a return and keep the person invested in financial assets for longer? Yeah, um, yeah. So you know, um, that, that's a very good question, and I, I did cover some bit of that. Uh, you know, in the fact of saying that you know, I think more than the the decent returns of this fund, the most important fact is the fact that it's very consistent. So if you see this allocation returns from a one year or a three year or a five year or a ten year or a twenty year perspective, it's pretty much between the ranges of I would say twelve to fifteen percent, depending on which fund you buy, conservative or aggressive. And uh, that's number one. Number two, what about poor performance? You know, so we've done something called a rolling study. So just to put that in very simple terms, if you hold this fund for a minimum of three to three years, at any point of time, even if you're investing in peaks or in any valuation, what we've seen is that the chances of you making negative returns or even above below eight percent is about three to four percent. You know, so there's an so out of the thousands of scenarios that you could have invested this fund in any sort of given period for a minimum of three years, there's a very low chance of you making really poor returns. So I I do think that the multi-asset approach is very effective because when you're having a poor performing asset class, you also have a high performing asset class in your portfolio, which which counters some of the bad performance, you know, in case it happens in equity. So I think when equity markets go badly, you have gold, which has done really well last year. You have international equity, which was very last year, and even debt has done phenomenally well over the last five to seven years. Now, obviously, you're seeing some reversal. So I think by having this multiple asset classes, it's actually maintaining that growth curve uh, over many, many years. Did I hear you say that the probability of making less than 8% is uh, about 3 to 4%? That's yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Couple of questions. Okay. And I, Radhika should be joining in soon. But uh, Pratik, a couple of other questions. One, if... Uh, if indeed equity funds over a period of time have given very good returns and the popular belief is that India is still the land of growth wherein investing in equities over a period of five years, seven years can yield really good returns. 
Uh, should somebody who is actually a long term investor and doesn't mind staying put for 10 years uh, look at a pure equity fund in the hope for a higher alpha? Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think uh, so. I do believe that, you know, I think uh, 100% equity is a perfectly good strategy. Uh, although the only problem is that, you know, not many people are, it is in my, in my experience for the last 10, 15 years, I've seen very few people who are able to take their volatility that is, that is associated with equity. You know, I think uh, a lot of people haven't really seen the sort of losses that have come in, say, the, like the dot-com bubble or the 2008 crisis. So it's not a bad strategy. It's it's somewhat what I do as well on the side, personally. But uh, I do feel that you know, uh, in terms of just uh, ability for people to hang on to equity as a category during periods when you're losing 50, 60, 70 percent in a very short time period, you know, that can that can really be nerve wracking for a lot of investors. Which is why you know I do recommend having maybe a small debt portion. We, what we've also seen is that you know having a hundred percent equity portfolio versus having in sort of an 80-20 really makes almost no difference to your returns. It makes a marginal difference. You probably make a little bit higher returns, but you're taking a lot more excessive risk. So um, I think uh, the standard of an aggressive investor globally tends to be 80-20. And uh, I, I would sort of um, recommend investors to be there if they're aggressive, but obviously 100% equity strategy is also perfectly fine. Okay. Uh, and the final couple of questions, Pradeep. One of them is uh, about the taxation part. Is that a bit of a challenge out here because uh, I, I reckon if I'm not wrong that this would be subject to debt taxation yes yeah, yeah. so extremely important point you know so investors should know that this is uh, both these products so as for regulations you know FOFs unless you have like a 95 percent exposure to equity tend to be taxed as debt so both these funds aggressive and conservative will be taxed uh, as as debt instruments so investors should I be looking at this from a minimum three to five year perspective Otherwise, uh, it will be taxes short-term short -term gains. So just, yeah, it's a, it's a very important point that uh, you, know, you should look at this from a very long-term perspective and not only really pay this for a one-year or two-year thing. And obviously, so just to add to that, you know, if investors hold this for three years, then they can get benefits uh, like indexation where you know, they can essentially um, you know, increase your purchase price by inflation, which reduces your tax outlay uh, dramatically. Yeah, yeah. Quite, quite strongly. Uh, and that I agree. So that's an important point too. Uh, lastly, Pratik, uh, what kind of investors do you hope to uh, attract? I mean, I I'm just guessing that you, the simple answer is oh, everybody can invest. But when you're launching something, you, you believe that there is a certain class of investors to whom this will appeal the most and is suitable for them the most. Uh, what kind of investors do you reckon or would you advise should look at uh, uh, these two offerings? Yeah, so... Um you know, so when we obviously went and designed the product, we designed for someone who's not really, not really, um, you know, very savvy with when it comes to equity investing. You know, someone who just wants to put in five hundred thousand or five thousand or ten thousand rupees a month and doesn't want to care about you know, which funds to buy, how do you allocate the money, how do you rebalance your fund? That is typically what we have designed the product for. Something extremely simple, and we can offer a portfolio to an investor at a very low cost, passively managed, all of that. So that is a segment which uh, which I would like to, you know, appeal this fund towards. Uh, also, you know, I think a lot of people today, you know, when you look at the markets, they're pretty expensive. You know, yields and debt are also pretty low. You know, international markets are very expensive. Gold was the highest performing asset class last year. So it's very confusing. A lot of, a lot of my clients are also holding a lot of cash. So this could be a good way of deploying money in a low risk, low cost way where you're ensuring some downside protection because you know, you're buying multiple assets. So I think these two, uh, categories would be, uh, you know, essentially where we're getting good traction from. Great. Okay. Um, Pratik, interesting product. Thanks so much for joining in and explaining this to us and all the best with the NFO. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me and uh, look forward to the next one. Yes. The pleasure was ours entirely. Thank you so much, Pratik. Thanks so much for that. Thanks. Thanks, Iraj. Thanks, Iraj. Bye. Bye, Radhika. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, two, uh, two, two, uh, Two people managing two different AMCs with two different products uh, joining on the show today, as I said. So that was Pratik Oswal with the Motilal Oswal Asset Allocation Passive Fund of Funds, the two offerings, aggressive and conservative. I'm guessing that there's no doubt to who the next offering that is from the Edelweiss table is aimed towards. But I'll let <laughs> come in and talk about that. They are going to launch the Edelweiss.